that they definitely need it. And uh, there's things that are going on that's stirring up that uh, we want people know we stand with Israel, amen? And, you know, some people, it, before it was like, you know, Christians and Jews and stuff, but biblically, they were always together. I mean, when G Jesus is Jewish, so whether you like it or not, that's what he is. And it says in the book of Romans, nine and 10, you know, 11, when you read it, it says that you're engrafted into the olive branch. The, it says the former olive branch, it was bro broken off, but then God engrafted to the Gentile, the olive branch to make one whole branch as far as tree, amen? And Jesus said, he's the true vine, we're the branches. So we're engrafted, me, I, praise God, you know, I'm born Jewish anyways, but it, it, you know, I still need to receive Jesus myself, amen? You know, just works isn't just good enough. It's, it's by faith through grace, you know, by grace through faith that we're saved. And it's not of works, because works don't get you to heaven. But Jesus does. Amen? Or Yeshua. Because it says there's no name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Amen? And that's the name of Jesus, because his name's above every name. <clears throat> so, we need, if any time, is to pray for Israel, because it, it's going like in a war. And, I, and I've been listening to things. And you know, there's news out there, media, that's fake. They're anti-Israel, but we're pro, amen, to be with them. But there's anti, and they're, they're like, you know, making it look like it's one-sided. So you gotta, you gotta go through news and if anything, hear from the people themselves. You know, one thing you look at Israel, you don't see them, per, per se, them starting war with other people. It's usually the other people starting war with them. Amen? I mean, you could just look, go down through history. And we'll, we'll see through the Word of God when we get into this. Amen? But we'll pray. Father, we thank you for your Word this evening. We give you the glory, honor, and praise. We thank you. You're the Lord God that created heaven and earth. We thank you for being here in the midst with us this evening. We thank you for your word. Even as we share some things out of your word, we thank you as we can engage in prayer. And we give you glory, honor, and praise for it, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And in whatever gifts and manifestation of your Holy Spirit, we thank you in advance for it and give you the glory, give you the praise and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. <clears throat> well, over here, I want to go to the book of Psalms. Amen. Psalms 122. Praise the Lord. It's good to see everyone. See the saints in the house of God. And uh, I'm going to read out of the CSB translation. Christian. Uh, but we're pretty uh, familiar with this and why he's doing it. I'll read it first from here huh? in uh, CSB. I'll read it from uh, the King James first. He said, I was glad when they said, let us go unto the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. And he said, Jerusalem is builded as a city that's compacted, compact together. Amen. That means tightly fitted, knitted together. Praise God. 
unified, solidly unified. Let's go back to verse 1. I'll read it in the whole thing. He said, a song of accents of David. I rejoice when those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Man, if you have anyone that comes to you and says, let us go, what's it mean to go? It means go pray. It means go to hear the word. It means go to be united with family in one faith. One baptism, one Lord, one God, amen, and one spirit, praise God. He said our feet were standing within, not outside, but within your gates, Jerusalem. Now, I want you to see something here because Jerusalem means Jeru Salim. It means founded by peace. That's why I mean, when you look at it, Jerusalem itself didn't start wars. People start wars with them. You could go throughout the whole Bible and look at it. It's most of the time when they went, I mean, of course, when they were going to Jericho, they were coming up in there. But if they were coming out of Egypt, the Amal or uh, Amalekites came up against them. They wouldn't even let them cross over to get out of there, and they came up, fought against them. But at Jerusalem is peace. I mean, it means found by peace. And when you look at it, there's war that goes on around it that tries creating war. But he said, our feet are standing within your gates. Now, there's two of them. We got the heavenly Jerusalem. That's where we're born from above. But we also support Jerusalem here on the earth. Amen? Because that's where Jesus is going to come and reign. Praise God. He's going to come down on Mount of Olives. The land going to be split, and he's going to be ruling and reigning there, you know, in Jerusalem. And he says here, Jerusalem built as a city should be sod, sodly or sod, you know, so, solid, sodly trying to get the pronounce excuse me united amen that's how people when you're united in faith when you're united in a, one thing man nothing can stop you from accomplishing what you're supposed to do amen and he says this where the tribes, the Lord's tribes, go up to give thanks to the name of the Lord. This is an ordinance for Israel. Amen? It's an ordinance. Now watch this. I want you to see some. There are thrones for judgment. Their thrones for judgment are placed. To bring justice is judgment, whether for good or for bad. You know, that's what judgment is. It's for to uh, acquit or to be sentenced. It's for good or for those on the wrong side for bad for them. It ain't gonna go well when judgment hits. But when judgment goes, it goes favorable to the ones who are on the right side. It says thrones of the house of David. Pray for the well-being of Jerusalem. That's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna pray for them May those who love you be secure. That's what he's saying. Pray for them that they shall, that word in the King James says to prosper. The word prosper really means to be secure or quietness. You know, that he, he said in King James, it says, pray for Jerusalem. Pray for the peace, the shalom in Jerusalem. And that's what we want to pray for peace, shalom, amen, well-being of Jerusalem. Not people getting killed, people being ravished, you know, like that kind, people being uh people breaking in and just taking what they want. It says they shall prosper or they shall be secure that love you. You never, God said he's merciful to them that are merciful. Look at what even Jesus said here in Matthews, and we're pretty 
we're pretty uh, acquainted with this in Matthew's chapter chapter 5 he says this in verse 9 or in that verse 7 blessed are the merciful for they shall what obtain mercy that's reaping and sowing amen the next one says blessed are the what peacemaker or it says blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God and then bless are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of God it says when you put on the armor of God what do you put you put your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of what peace you're not here to make war and we're about to get into that about the fruit of the spirit that one we didn't go into it says what it talks about peace love joy and peace well I won't get too much because we'll go in with it Sunday but look what he says here in, in the book of uh, Romans <clears throat> it says right here in Romans chapter 12 it tells us verse 18 and part of being of Jerusalem is being peaceful. Amen. You're not going out trying to make war. You want to go in and make reconciliation. But when you got sometimes people that are, it's not, I'm not focused just on the people. It's the enemy behind the people. <clears throat> and the enemy puts the thoughts. It's the beliefs. It's the teachings. When you teach people to hate, that's not of God. Because God so loved the what? He didn't hate the world. If he did, he would have destroyed it. But God so loved the world that what he gave. Amen? Well, when you got people that are coming against because of hate, well, love does overcome. But when you're trying to protect your country, protect your thing, you got to respond in a way. Because that's why he said Romans 13, they don't carry the sword in vain to the evildoers. So he said, as much, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. You know what's funny, too? Because there's a lot of civilians. I, I don't look at people as a whole uh, Palestine or just Israel. Because you got Jews, Christians, and Muslims in the whole Israel. And, you know, they're not warm, but the one there are coming they will we'll see it's like hamas coming against it and i want to share something because wow i was listening today and rabbi was taught by rabbi jason sorbel and uh it was pretty pretty something else about the revelation he brought out which i wanted to share a quick thing about because i think it enlightened what's really what's going on in some form and it, it's good what was said because the Hebrew words kind of reveal what needs to be done because the word of God says you can't just have the new without the old it says in Matthew 13 I think 58 that even in treasures when you pull out the treasures you, you there is also the old the new and the old in that amen so you can't just have one side of the book you need both amen and so he said to live peaceably, amen, with, with one another, amen. And, and living peaceably doesn't mean you just give in to everything. And some people, uh, you know, I don't want to get too much with this, but if one party's like, well, we want you obliterated, well, how, how do you reconcile peace with that? You'll be like, yeah, we can help you and do things. But if you're like, hey, you no, know, you need to just be gone. We want you off the map. Well, that don't work that way. Because there's, uh, not, there's the one side it could be at peace. The other side might be just for war. So he said, as much as the lie within us, let us live peaceably with all people. Amen.
And so he tells us even this. And we usually, this is one of the things we go to in prayer in First Timothy chapter 1 or chapter 2, verse 1. He tells us this. I exhort. That means he, he urges, therefore, that first of all, you know, it's not talking about it all the time. It's praying about it and then doing something about it as the Lord leads. First of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving the thanks be made for all. So he doesn't just say for one in particular, but for all. Well, right now they need it. And for kings, for all that are in authority. Amen. It could be ones you don't even agree with, but if you pray for them, God can maybe move upon their hearts, reach them in a way in a dream or something, send people to them. But it's up to them ultimately decide, okay, I want to go this way. Why is that? That we may lead a quiet and peaceable life with what? All godliness and honesty. So people want security. That's quietness in their life. Well, then you pray. Amen. You pray for them. You pray for your families. You pray for people in general. But we're going to pray for Israel. Amen. That th Why? They can live a quiet and peaceful life. You know, this has been going on for a long time. But we're we going to come hand in hand and join in prayer and agreement that God will move. Now, I want you to see something. Because he said, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, that they shall prosper that love you in Psalms 122, or that, and that there shall be what? He says in verse, because if you look at verse 6, he says, pray for the what? Shalom, the well-being in soul, you know, shalom, whole, nothing missing, nothing broken in their life. But a security, wholeness, may those who love you be secure. He says what? May there be shalom within your walls and security within what? Your fortresses or palaces. So that means even, in other words, prosperity means security. See, you got the King James says prosperity. Some people think money. Well, they're talking about security. You know, you can have money if you got no security. Someone can come and take whatever you got. Amen. You need security to have peace at times. <laughs> so that there may be peace and quietness within your walls and security within your fortresses. And he says, for because of my brethren and friends, I will say, may peace be in you. May the shalom be in you. Peace within your life. Peace within your home. Amen. So he's saying that. <clears throat> and he says, next verse, because of the house of the Lord, our God, I will pursue your prosperity or seek your good, your welfare. Amen. Of what you have. Prosperity too. It could be the security, the shalom, the peace in your life. I will pursue after it. It says those that sow in peace will what? It well tells us in the book of James right here, chapter 3. <clears throat> it says right here, verse 8. I'll, I'll read it here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Verse 13. And you could probably put in this CSB uh, if it's there. It says right here, Who among you is wise and understanding? By his good conduct, he should show that his works are done in gentleness that comes from wisdom. So it's called... Well, you know, if you, you have the wisdom of God and you understand his will, it will be shown in your works and your conduct what it is that you believe. Amen? There should be a demonstration. 
you could see people that believe the opposite talking about religions wise and you see the works that follow what they believe well as christians you see what the word of god says who among you is wise and understanding by his good conduct he should show his works are done in what roughness no gentleness that comes from what wisdom and then it says right here but if you have bitter envy and selfish ambitions in your heart don't boo boast and deny the truth because where there is what next verse such wisdom does not come down from above but it's earthly unspiritual and demonic so there's what's the motivation force behind it he said it's earthly which is worldly it's unspiritual so that means it's sensual and then it's demonic it says it's devilish so it's demonic it's a demonic device behind it it could be a stronghold in people's mind but gentleness is of god god's gentle amen but demonic is they're rough they want to fight do kind of crazy stuff but that that's a demonic thing because there's hatred bitterness there's envy going on what does he say here for where there is envy and selfish ambition there's what disorder and every evil practice so where you see disorder that's not from god it says in first corinthians 15 god's of god of what or 14 of peace and of order he's not of confusion that god's not a god of confusion but of peace shalom security amen quietness <clears throat> order like when you hear people getting obnoxious in courtrooms, then they hits down the javelin and say, order in the court, order in the court. That means to be quiet. Or they toss people out. So you can leave, escort them to that door. And why? So there can be quietness going on. Amen. Where there's disorder, there's lawlessness. Amen. When you see people rioting, stealing, and all that that ain't godly that's demonic because who's the thief john chapter 10 10 it says jesus come to give life and that much more abundantly but the devil or the thief cometh to steal kill and destroy there's the root right there of it stealing killing and destroying that ain't god that's the devil that's demonic so when people are coming in to steal is demonic when they're coming in to kill i'm not talking about uh, uh you know uh, killing meaning murder like that way that's demonic that's the devil and destroy they it, it, i mean when you got to defend yourself or something that's a different thing but people that come in just to destroy stuff that's not of god amen that's where it's a thief he's the devil that's his work so what's it say here next one but the wisdom from above is first what pure it says blessed are the pure in heart for they shall do what see god amen then uh, oh you might have to have the translation mm -hmm. it says then peace loving gentle amen rough is man you grabbing people god said it'll make the rough places what smooth amen what's that word com compl compl compliant that means they follow rules you know obey orders they're, they're compliant with that full of mercy and of good fruits where your treasure is that's where your heart is also unwavering without unwavering so they're not moved by things amen it says they're unwavering 
they're not partial in what they do, and they're without pretense. This says uh, without hypocrisy, in, in other words. They don't say something, do a different thing against it. You know, it's one thing you say something wrong, then you do a, a good thing. That's a good way, you know, but it's another thing. Say you'll do this, and it was wrong on how you do it. And last verse, watch this. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace. See, that's harvest. People want, it says, they that be, have friends must show themselves friendly. Book of Proverbs says that. Well, how you do? You show it, you do it in peace. You start walking up to people, punching them and stuff. You ain't going to be, uh, what's it called? You know, saying, hey, what up? Are you hitting them? Can we be friends, man? They'll be like, man, I don't want to be no friends with this person. Smacking people upside the yeah that that ain't friendly that ain't walking in peace, but it's sown in peace by those who cultivate it, amen. They know how to cultivate it. Praise God. So you could see the works and the fruits of where what's sown. So you don't the fruits is what's manifesting, but it comes from what the roots. So to get something that's bad, you got to root it out of them. So you people try to deal with the fruit. You don't deal with the fruit. You deal with the root of what's behind it. And it's demonic. It's a stronghold that goes on in people's lives. I want you to see something here. Look at this. This is what I wanted to talk about for a minute, just so you go see something on both sides. That's why we're praying. It says here in Matthew 24, and this is what the rabbi, he was talking about, and it, it's, a, it's a good revelation. I want you to see something. It says in verse 36, it says, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Amen? For as in the days of Noah before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until that day that Noah entered what? The ark. And it says here, and knew not until the flood came. They didn't even know what was happening, that destruction was coming. They didn't even really. They were so caught up doing their own thing. They weren't thinking about nothing. There's no one in the midst of it. And then you see Jesus talking about because he expects you also to look what was going on in the days of Noah. He said marrying and giving in marriage, but there was other stuff happening when you read about Noah's time. And he said, now, knew not till the flood came and took them away. Who's the one that went away? Who was it? The wicked, not the righteous. The righteous were saved. The wicked is the one that was taken out of the way. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Watch this. Go to Genesis chapter 6. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Genesis 6. And I, I'll just read it real quick through here. I want you to see something. It said in verse 1, It came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. They saw that the that sons of God saw the daughters of men, and they were fair or beautiful, and they took them wives of all which they chose. In other words, they weren't asking. They were just taken. And they were talking about uh, the sons of God, talking about fallen angels. People want to say, well, it was a different, you know, we talked about it before. But uh, it says, and the Lord said, my spirit, See, we're in the time of grace where spirit is upon the earth. Amen? 
when that time what happens if his spirit comes out of the earth and when the antichrist he talk about comes what we think will go on in the earth it'd be chaos disorder all kind of stuff and so he says He said, the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. There were giants in the earth in those days. And after that, the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they bare children to them. The same became mighty men of old, men of renown, of great rec reputation. These are people well known. It's if you want to look, you could see people who like reputation, renown. Were they good? Didn't say they were good either. Well, when you got people that have great reputation or renown, well-known, who follows after them? We got the people following right now. If you say it, look at it. You go on YouTube, TikTok, Facebook. What does they tell you to do if you like them? Hello, follow them. It's very plain. You hit on it, that means you follow them. Why would you follow them unless you like them? So you look at who they following, because I'm following Jesus. And I'll be with the brothers and sisters in the Lord that I'll follow, but I'm not following garbage. You hit that follow, it's right at the hand. You're saying you're following them. Think about it. It's for people don't even think about that. And this ain't even what he was talking about. I'm getting to that. I'm just talking about following. Jesus said, take up your cross and what? Follow me. If Jesus had an app on there, he'll be like, you can hit follow. Then you go where you go, where you are. Amen. And then you'll be following him if he had an app. See how many followers there really are. Huh? Huh? You could see, well, the people who got the Bible, you could see how many followers there are of Jesus, amen? But you got other ones that are following these people, artists, actors, craziness stuff. I don't even want to get into saying what the else they're following, you know, because they hit it, you know, what are they liking and following? It says a lot. You don't even have to speak it. You just hit it. And then you're saying you're on board with them. So what does it say here? There was giants, and they were men of renown, of old. And these were people, you know, today we got some, and they're demonic, and people are following them. And they can't keep the clothes on, looking all crazy. I'm just saying just not, I'm just saying I'm just crazy looking today. You think about it. I'm just saying back, and I'm not knocking down. People are getting saved. People with tattoos, you see it all over their face and their arms and everything like it's a, like it's a style. You see that? Like it, it's, it's a cool thing. And now people are doing They're putting it all over. You know the kind of people who used to have all that? The people in prison. So the prison stuff is what's outside now, making that what's the cool thing. Call what's evil good and good evil. They're saying, hey, I'm what, what makes a person want to do that? What drives a person to want to do that? Say, let me put all this stuff, writings all over. Is it cool? Is it the style? It's a fashion? Because clothes you can change. You start tattooing yourself, you ain't just getting that stuff off. People pay thousands of dollars for it. Ten thousands of dollars get their whole back done. Where your treasure is, that's where your heart is also. I'm not saying, hey, you know, because a person come to the Lord, they were like that. Boom, I seen guys, I don't care. You got a whole bunch of tattoos, God loves you. It ain't about that, but I'm just saying what motivates the factor for someone that does that to their body. It's just like someone that cuts themselves, desecrates their body. They're cutting and trying to commit suicide. What's doing causing them to drive to do that? That ain't cool. You trying to cut yourself, relieve yourself from pain. That's not a good thing.
So here we'll keep going down. I don't know why I went off in that. But uh, we'll go, go on further, stay on track. It said, God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth and every imagination of the thoughts of his heart, look at this, was only evil continually. And in other words, everything he thought and looked around at, it was evil. You couldn't even look at someone to think nice thoughts. It was evil. They had violent thoughts, imaginations of thoughts like they wanted to do something to somebody when they looked at them. You know, that's demonic. But where are they getting it from? Yeah, but where's it coming through? Yeah, because now you're looking at and following and then you're getting ideas, images, and then that stuff gets on them. And they start saying, oh, that's cool. They keep watching more and more and more. That what, what ends up stirring up themselves. And what's motivating those videos? What's the fruit behind it? Or the root? We'll say the root behind it, not the fruit. You see the works of the fruit, but what's the root behind it? It's not godly. It's demonic, sensual, and worldly. You know, when you get, I'm just saying this, when you get to a point where they, see, when you see real violence, like people getting killed, it's sad. That's why people are crying when they see them coming, killing babies, people, and going in towns. That's nothing to cheer about. If a person's cheering about that, that's like straight up demonic. What's the mo root behind that? It's not God. Amen. He don't cheer that on. So what's the moment? So when you see videos of people fighting and they think it's cool and cheering it on, that, that's not of God. You know, where they're violently doing stuff and fighting and just like, let's make a video about that. That's not that. What 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 imaginations are going on in their mind that they want to post videos like that? Well, it ain't God saying, "Let's post a video. Let's see here. You shoot the video. I'm just gonna go up and whip someone down, and we'll post that. See how many views we get." <clears throat> no, that's what people practically do. They do stupid stuff to catch get views. Yeah, they'll go and just do stupid stuff, restaurants, all kind of stuff on jobs so they can get a view and post it. That's where it's come to. So what's motivating them to do that? Let's keep going. Back then, they didn't have TV and all that stuff. So today, it can get re-energized way faster than what it was then. So it said, it repented the Lord that he made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. And watch this. And the Lord said, I'll destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping things and fowls of the air. And it repented me that I made them. Watch what it says here in eight. And, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. They unmerited favor of God's divine influence upon his heart, because that's what a Hebrew means. It's God's influence. He influenced Noah on his heart. The other ones weren't influenced by God. They were influenced by a not demonic. And what happened? And these are generation of Noah. Gen Noah was just man and perfect in his generation. Noah walked, followed God. He walked with them. Amen. That means he had a relationship with the Lord. He talked to him, have fellowship. When you walk with someone, not walking, saying nothing, you walk with them and you fellowship with them. Amen. If me and Sozi are walking, well, she don't like it when I walk in front of her, like I'm on the move. She said, get back over here, walk on the side of me, because I'm like hurrying to get somewhere. Because you, you, you want to talk when you're with someone. You want to see where they're, so you walk with them. Amen? And so right here, and Noah begot three sons, and wa I want you to see something here. And Shem, Hem, and Japheth, and watch this next verse. And the earth also was what? Corrupt before God. 
and the earth was filled with what? Violence. This is what I want you to see. The word violence in the Hebrew, you know what that word means? <clears throat> this is going to blow your minds. It means Hamas. It's Hamas in the Hebrew, but it's Hamas. It means violence. That's what it is. And so if you look at what's happening right now, the word, the group is Hamas. What are they doing? Causing violence. And that's what it was happening right now. It means the same thing. This is not by coincidence. The name of them is Hamas. And that's what they do. It's violent. And it said what he said, the earth was corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence, the Hamas. And it says, and God looked upon the earth and behold, it was corrupt and all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. So I wanted you to see something there because it was filled with violence. That's why we got to pray shalom and pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Amen. Now, there's other things in there that God, it, it says, and it talks about how he deals with violence, God, because he'll wipe it out. He'll, he'll, he'll cause it to be desolate where he'll wipe it out, you know, because especially when you come up against what God promises. Amen. Because Jerusalem's not going nowhere. That's already settled. It says here in the book of Jeremiah, and I, you know, I won't get in, we'll, we'll pray in a minute, but Jeremiah 31, it says verse 35, it said, thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divideth the sea when the waves thereof roar. The Lord of armies or host is his name. He says this, if those ordinances, the sun, the moon, the stars, depart from before me, saith the Lord, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. Well, that ain't going nowhere. So the seed of Israel, no matter who or what says whatever they want to say, is not going nowhere. God's seed is here, and it remains on the earth, and it will be here. I'm just letting you know. He says it will be a nation. Watch. A seed of Israel shall not cease from being a nation before me forever. That's God's promise there. And he says right here, verse 37, thus saith the Lord, if the heaven above can be measured, if man could somehow measure heaven above and the foundations of the earth be searched out beneath, they're still searching it out and haven't found it all the way. They can't even get to the center of the earth. If they try, they ain't going to be nowhere to tell about it because they'll burn off because it's so hot down in the middle of there. It says, I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all that they have done, saith the Lord. Well, it's not man ain't going to measure heaven at all because they can't. They don't got a ruler big enough to measure how high heaven is. They, they said the triumph of the wicked is short because though he build up to the heavens, it will be shut down. It will be cut short in the book of Job. So he could try to go as far as he can, but they tried in the book of Babel, in Genesis and Babylon, and it was cut down. So it's the same thing. They could do whatever, but they haven't figured it all out yet. They don't know the depth, and they don't know the height. They don't even know from the east and the west. They just still try. They got enough to deal with here on the earth. And then yet alone go out into space to try to figure out what's all out there. They can 
see some things, but they, they can't measure it. There's no distance they're going to measure to see where heaven ends. Amen? All that, because there's three heavens. The atmosphere, the universe, and then the heavens where only you can go when you know Jesus. Amen? So that's, so that's not going anywhere. That settles it there. God made a covenant, and Israel's not going anywhere. I don't care what man says or anything. It doesn't matter. Man don't have the final say. God does. And God made a covenant with himself, and he told it even in Genesis 12 with Abraham. I mean, that he'll make his name great, and he'll take him to a land, and he already did it. And then when Jerusalem has been started, yeah, it might have went through some things in the past, but that was the past, uh, but it's still remaining. Amen. Uh, so we're, we'll, we'll pray for the people. Amen. And we want to pray, praise God, both people, because people are, we don't want, you want people to be saved ultimately, but you want peace. Amen. But we, we don't want that uh, Hamas being in there going on. Amen. And that's demonic there. And if they, you know, don't get it right, it might just be uh, wiped off, wiped off the earth. And, uh, you know, God, 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 when God steps in, Hey, he, he can clear things. If you look at ISIS, where are they now? They're, they're not there no more. You heard a whole big thing about it, but you don't hear it no more. I'm sure they're probably with Hamas now, but there's no more ISIS, you hear. It was all 9-11, everything, the golf and all that. You don't hear about it anymore. It's not even a thing to talk about. So here, we're going to pray this. We're going to pray, pray Numbers 6 over Israel. Amen. The Lord bless them. The Lord keep them. Amen. We're going to pray this as well. Isaiah 61, <clears throat> or excuse me, Isaiah 60, verse 18. It says, violence shall no more be heard in the land, and wasting nor destruction within the borders. Amen? That there won't be wasting and destruction in the borders, but the walls of salvation, the gates of praise. But we're talking about that you won't hear the violence going, that this thing will cease, but quietness will come in the land. Amen? And uh, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against them when the enemy comes in like a flood. And that this also in the book of Psalms, Psalms, and these are scriptures you can pay, pray over your own city, your own home, but we're praying for Jerusalem, amen? He says this here in Psalms 144, verse 14. He says that our gardener or that our oxen may be strong to labor, but it says this, that there'll be no breaking in, nor going out, nor that there'll be complaining in our streets. See, it says, do all things without murmuring and complaining. But it says, no break in, no thievery going on. Amen? That's something you could pray over your own house. Ain't no breaking in going in my house and nor going out. They ain't taking nothing, and there ain't going to be no complaining. And that this also, one more, since it came right to my mind, Psalms 18. Watch this. <clears throat> Psalms 18 is this, I like this verse a lot, but he says here that the Lord has delivered me. That's right. 
and that's right in right here yeah psalms 18 one uh psalms 18 verse uh let me get this hold on yeah it's right here it's for it's 40 43 it says thou has delivered me from what the strivings of the people that's the strivings the strife that the contention that's been going on and you have made me the head of the heathen a people whom I have not known he said they're gonna serve me amen but delivering from the striving of the people if you got strife in your life man you pray that over your own life God deliver me from the striving of the people amen but we're specifically targeting this towards Israel oh can you put it back up God what thou has delivered me from the strivings contentions of the people amen so we're gonna pray we're gonna pray numbers 6 24 because he you know when I when, when we talk words of faith we we got words to back it up because the scriptures say it so delivering from the striving of the people that there will be no breaking in or coming out or no complaining in the streets and there will be no more violence within the way nor wasting nor destructions what in the gates amen so we're going to pray that over the border, that Gaza Strip, that we'll believe God, amen, that this, it will cease, that this thing will cease. How it ceases, I don't know exactly how. God does, but he can intervene, amen? So how it's done could be done many ways because it says through, it says, through a multitude of wisdom, the earth is full of your riches. Talking about God, the man of full wisdom of God, the earth is full of his riches. Amen. So we're we're gonna come together and we're gonna come in agreement, and that's where uh that's what uh we gonna stand with, amen. That we're going to come unified in prayer. The ultimate goal of what we believe is people get saved. That Yeshua can be heard in the land. Because the only way you have peace is when the middle wall is broken down, a partition where the Jew and Gentile can come together as one. But it's through Jesus. It's no other way to bring the peace but through Jesus Christ. Amen. Because then you're one faith, you're of one accord, you're of one mind, and then you see the purpose and the plan of God. Amen? That this is his will, is all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. Praise God. So as we come together, we're going to come in agreement, and we're going to pray and pray for these things over Israel. Amen? So that, that well, you, this is like a line you can learn because you get scriptures in the word and then you bring them before the Lord for what your petition is. Amen. And you bring the petition before God and you come in agreement with God's word and you can come in agreement with your fellow brethren, sisters in church. That's why when we come to pray, I say we gonna come and touch and agree because whatever we ask the Father, when two touch and agree here on earth, it shall be done of my Father which is in heaven. Amen. And you got something to back it up. And then we can see God move. I sense the presence of the Lord. Amen. Because God Jerusalem is founded by peace. That's what it's named by peace and God is for peace but if people are for war that that's between them and God amen so father right now in the name of Jesus we come boldly before your throne of grace we thank you right now for your word father God 
because your word is power. And we thank you that we can come boldly before your throne, Father God, to find mercy and tam grace in a time of need, Father God. And right now is the time. We lift up Israel before you. We lift up the Gaza Strip before you, Father God. We pray over both these innocent people that are being slain. Lord, we ask you for justice to prevail in this situation. But we pray, Father God, number 624, that the Lord, you bless them. You protect them, Father God. We ask you, Lord, that you cause your face to shine upon them and look upon them and watch over them and be gracious to them those who want the peace and lord lift up your continents upon them because we pray for israel shalom we pray for the peace in israel we pray for the peace in gaza the shalom father god over gaza that the striving will cease that violence according to your word in isaiah 60 will be no more and that wasting and destruction will not be within their borders but we speak salvation yeshua be brought upon the borders where the walls where the separation is that two can become one and that praise will be rung and heard in your gates in the name of Jesus, of Yeshua HaMashiach, Father God. We thank you right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Yeshua, Father God. And that according to Psalms, Father God, 144, that there'll be no breaking in, that breaking in and thieving and taking will stop and then cease and decess in the name of Jesus and that there'll be no more complaining in the streets but we thank you it will cease the striving the complaining in Jesus mighty name and we put this group Hamas up before you because it's called Hamas for violence. And we thank you because you said violence will be heard no more, Lord. Because you said you destroy the teeth of the ungodly, of the wicked. As you did with the devil, you knocked out all his teeth. We thank you his teeth are already knocked out. And we ask you, Father God, that you move in behalf of Israel, that even out of this, good will come. People will be saved, Father God. People will come to know you, Yahshua, that people will see that you are real, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you that the stronghold of the enemy is bound. Your angels are loosed in Jesus' name, Father God. Loose that they'll be saved. Loose that violence will cease. Loose that wasting and destruction will cease because your word declares when an enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord in the book of Isaiah shall raise up a standard against the enemy in Jesus mighty name and your word declares in Isaiah that no weapon formed against Israel shall prosper and every tongue that rise up against them in judgment will be condemned and made ashamed in Jesus mighty name because a thousand will fall at their side and ten thousand at their right hand but no evil shall befall them and neither any plague come near their dwelling in the mighty matchless name of Jesus the name above every name that that name will be rung in Israel 
that that name will be rung in Gaza, that that name will be heard throughout the countries around about Israel, because as the mounds are around about Israel, so are you around about your people in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you today. We give you praise today for doing it now in Jesus, Yeshua's name, Father God. We thank you, Lord. Your ears are open to our prayer. Your eyes are over the righteous. And we thank you that you have heard us, that you said when we pray that there be quietness, Father God, that they can live honestly and godly in that place. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you. We speak peace over Jerusalem. We speak peace and shalom over Israel. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. We give you praise. We thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the church says amen and amen. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. I sense something move right now. I believe it is done. Hallelujah. We gonna see God move in this place. Hallelujah. And we thank you, Father, for doing it. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, we pray that you all been blessed today. We ask you to stand in agreement. We'll put this up, I believe, today so people can view this. Amen. Because we, we don't want you getting the message next week to pray because we don't know tomorrow. We know for today as we pray, this word's going to go out. Amen. So we hope you all have a blessed evening. We pray peace be with you and within your walls in the name of Yeshua, HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah. God bless you. We love you. We just want you to know that you know Jesus, you grow in Jesus, and you show and manifest Jesus in your life. Have a blessed evening. God bless you. Amen.